UConn has to do a good job on the defensive glass. Kentucky can hurt you with the ability to go one-on-one. -on -one. Then I think Kentucky has more weapons than UConn. I think it's going to be important for the Huskies to get contributions from their big guys. They've got to find some points, not just from their backcourt. Looking at down low, Jones, Swarm, outside, short, short, back to Jones. The freshman resets it to the other freshman, Knight. Ron Lamb, the third of the decorated freshmen, he'll come off the bench. They're really just a six-man most of the time. And that's off the fingertips of Oriaki. It'll stay with Kentucky. Now we talked about this in the first game, the nerves coming out the first few minutes. Most of these teams are going to take a little bit of time to get into the flow of the game. You might see a few missed shots here early on. Yeah, Brandon Knight rushed that one a little bit and was not on balance. But I talked to him yesterday. I said, what's the strongest part of your game? He said, I'd have to say shooting the ball and my confidence. Allison too strong with the shot, and Oriaki clears it. Now they met back in the final of the Maui Invitation all the way back to the 24th, and UConn blitzed them by 17. Biggest loss of the year by the Wildcats. Olander, and he converts. Unexpected points. He scored only 54 all season long, and he gets the opening bucket here. And I love Jim Calhoun. Goes right to him, right off the bat. And this is a guy who's only expected to play the first few minutes of each half. He's never dumping it for Jones, who's patient and is rewarded. And will go to the line for one. This, con this Kentucky team is an excellent passing team. They don't turn it over much about 11 times a game. Beautiful find by Darius Miller. And I like the patience here by Terrence Jones. Knew exactly where he was under the basket, knew where the defenders were, and got the shot that he wanted under control. Now on Roscoe Smith and Jones unable to convert. Kim, you mentioned the Hawaii game. The only similarity at this point is the name on the uniform because these are totally different teams. Lamb didn't do much of anything in that game. Now he's become a star and on cue. He knocks down the yes. jumper. And Kentucky, a much better team, especially offensively. Their efficiency, you know, the way they're executing, they're running a, a totally different style of offense. A lot more sets, dribble handoffs, and not so many one-on-one -on -one isolation plays. Knight, back out to Jones. Little feeds the corner. Knight steps up. Way long with Allen. Harrelson, though, able to get the handle. Sets up Williams, and it rattles out. Harrelson and again, another tip out. Knight says, I'll take the three. Almost flat-footed. But Roscoe clears. Roscoe Smith. Keep in mind, UConn had trouble on the boards against both Arizona and San Diego State. So they're going to have to get after it down in the paint. We're out of Kentucky. Multiple shots, guys. Oriaki, who had 18 points and 11 rebounds in that matchup against Harrelson over in Maui. He converts the little shot. That's an important shot for him, too, because he has not scored well in the NCAA tournament. He's without a double-figure scoring game in the first four matchups. Should have been a turnover, but right there to pick it off the floor is Harrelson. Well, that's really one of the underestimated parts of Josh Harrelson's game. He has excellent hands. When he gets his hands on it around the goal, he usually finished. Oriaki. And it's tapped. Wait, wait. Out goes to the Wildcats. In that first meeting, Kimball Walker had 29. But you're right, a lot of central figures here tonight who really didn't have a role in that game. Oriaki, we mentioned, he had huge numbers. Here he is scoring again. Well, Harrison was a non-factor that game. He didn't score at all. Brandon Knight was three for 15 and five turnovers. But of course, he's a freshman, one of his first games of the year. I don't think he was ready for that kind of stage. I agree with you. He learned from it and grew through it. Then a foul call against the Huskies. We brought in Niels Gafai. And speaking of Gafai, he had 14 points in that game in Maui. He's barely played the last few games, but Jim Calhoun, remembering the contributions and the matchups that led to Gafai's strong outing, trying to see if he can get him going again here early. Mm -hmm. Had a couple of threes in that game. He's called for that foul. He's 
from Berlin, Germany, freshman. He's played only five minutes the last three games, but he's inserted here in the game's first three minutes. Well, I go back to Steve's point about needing to get more from the front line. Mm -hmm. Do the Huskies and Jim Calhoun probably rec recognizing that as well. Keep in mind, too, Kentucky basically plays six players. That's right. So Jim Calhoun may want to try to wear them down a little bit with numbers. Defy. Olander. Pass. Well, it was telegraphed. Harrelson came around to force the steal. Miller. Back to Knight. Short on the three. He's off early. Up yeah. ahead. Walker. Lincoln's defending. He can't stop him. Now Brandon Knight made another freshman mistake. He hasn't made many of them lately, but he made some in Maui. That time he missed the shot and he chased his own rebound. He's the last line of defense. He's got to get back. That's right. And he's not used his legs on his first couple of shots. He's been really flat and stationary on his jump shot. Knight. Miller to Liggins. Everyone touching it. Jones with a three. He's got it. Terrence Jones. The SEC Freshman of the Year. So much talk about Knight, but he was the Freshman of the Year, and he's got the foul. And he goes right past, misses, but puts it back up and in. Five quick ones by Jones. Well, Jones is so talented. I mean, he can step out on the floor and make a three, but he's also the best rebounder in the SEC, and he can handle the ball and do it all. Walker's pass, too high, too steep for Lamb. So Jones puts Kentucky up by two at the first break. Jim Nance with Clark Kellogg and Steve Kerr here in Houston. UConn and Kentucky, the last time each school won a national championship, they won it in the state of Texas. They both won in San Antonio. UConn in 2004, Kentucky 1998. Hugh Walker matched up with Brandon Knight. They'll play Brandon Knight off the ball because he's pretty good at coming off screens, and he is an excellent shooter, although he struggled here early. Stolen away. Defy has it. Kentucky still with its first five on the floor. We have not seen Deron Lamb on their side. Meanwhile, Charles Oquandu comes in for Connecticut, number 35. Dangerous pass, but Defy handles it, goes down low. Oriaki is rejected. Jones with a big first step. Aquandu has it. Snaps it. No. Stolen away by Miller, who wants it back. Goes down low. Back out. Boy, some snappy passes, but UConn closed in quickly on all of them. Did a nice job. You're right, Jim. Rotating to that basketball. That's right. That was a pass. Over to Harrelson, and out with it comes Lamb. Puts it in the hands of Walker, oh. and he will be shooting free throws. I think they got Darius Miller on the reach yep. in, and that's what you, where you want to keep Kemba Walker out of transition. Can't let him get those easy hoops. For final four game stats, highlights, social media updates, and live post game press conferences on your computer, iPad, or iPhone, log on to mmod.ncaa. Com. Well, the most decorated player at the Final Four, first team All-America. The only player at the Final Four to make first, second, or third team. And what a stretch it's been for Kimba. That month of March, they played nine games, knockout games, and they won them all going through the Big East Tournament, five games, five days. Just remarkable. Yeah, you throw in the Maui Invitational, and that's 12 and 0 in tournament games and sort of elimination style games for UConn this year. And that has been the main reason. I mean, he's their emotional leader. And the thing, as I started to talk about, you can't give him easy hoops and free throws because you know he's going to make tough jump shots and create space for himself. And those were his 37th and 38th free throw attempts in the tournament. Yeah. Harrelson missed another one inside. Lamb. And Harrelson, meanwhile, he's done this twice. Does a good job moving his feet and breaking contact, Jim. Yep, denying that inbound, that pass inside. Oh. And, and that's quite a foul. Clobbered is Jones. 
Tonight's aerial coverage provided by DirecTV. Houston has this magnificent stadium thanks to Houstonian Bob McNair who brought the NFL back here, the Texans, and this building hosted the Super Bowl seven years ago. There's Tubby Smith who won the championship for Kentucky back in 98 with his wife Donna alongside. Now the head coach in Minnesota. Jones to shoot a couple. Meanwhile, guys, how about the start for UConn? They've got six turnovers and only five field goal attempts. And remember, this is a club averaging seven turnovers per game in the NCAA tournament. So I mean, this has not been a problem for them at all. You wonder if the big stage maybe has them a little jittery, but they've got to settle down. And despite that, Steve, they're down a point. Yeah. And Kentucky not taking advantage of a couple of opportunities at the foul line. I think all game long, though, Connecticut's going to have a tough time with Terrence Jones because of his size and versatility. Walker. This guy's a problem for most teams because of his speed and quickness. Aquandu kept it alive. That bounces off the rim. Here comes Kentucky. They've got Lamb on their side in the game for the first time, and he scores. Goes to the other side to Ron Lamb. The speed and quickness of Brandon Knight to get that ball out into the open floor. That, that's what created that lane for Lamb. Lamb has averaged 12 points a game on the season as Okwandu able to get all the way to the rim. But he's only managed seven points a game in the tournament. He's the kind of guy, Jim and Steve, that could erupt mm -hmm. to Ron Lamb because he's athletic. He can shoot the three. He's one of the best three-point shooters in the country at 48%. But this guy's going to be a tough cover for UConn all game long, Terrence Jones. Kentucky's brought in Eloy Vargas, number 30, defending here. Defying a lot of minutes. I think, Vargas, uh, I think Vargas is out there for the same reason as Defy. Is he gave Kentucky oh. good minutes in this matchup in Maui. So, Kyle wow, Perry hoping for some more from his big man tonight. He's got a rebound there. Here's Lamb. No. And Vargas on the other end blocked. Aquandu says no can do. <laughs> Get that out of here. Aquandu making some plays too. Yeah, he's going to be an important player because of his size. And usually UConn likes to play small because that's when they're best offensively. But in this matchup, they're going to need some protection from Aquandu inside. Defy chases that down to keep it for the Huskies. And he's done a nice job here early. Came up with the steal. A few possessions ago, and now the offensive board giving UConn some extra possessions. Walker got three points so far. We heard John Calipari say prior to the start of the game in his visit with Tracy Wolfson, we're going to try to make it tough on Kimba Walker. And that's what they're doing so far. Now called on Lamb, Deron Lamb. Some blocked by Afondu. Nine minutes into this one, Kentucky has launched seven from behind the arc, made one. And UConn has not shot one from three-point land. Look at the six turnovers. Again, uh, Steve, you hit on that earlier. That's really way off their, their pace. Well, they're fortunate to just be down one because they've given up six offensive boards. We talked about those turnovers, but Kentucky can't make a shot. Five for 18 right. and just one for seven from the three-point line. Yeah, the shot volume is good. They've been anxious. They've rushed a number of those shots, especially the three-point looks they've had, and they're a good three-point shooting team. Shabazz Napier in for the first time, handling the ball here. That's a Kimba. That's a three, and he's got it. Kimba Walker. Napier is really good defensively at trying to pick your pocket off that dribble. He gauges the pace at which you bounce yeah. that ball. And Times it and can pick it right out of your hands if you're not careful. He gave Knight all kinds of trouble in Maui. He just took the ball from him one time. Hey. I think Deron Lamb was on the sideline. Turnover by Kentucky. Jamal Combs McDaniel into the Connecticut lineup number four. Jim, I thought DeAndre Liggins passed up a good shot, but Kentucky is always looking to go from a good shot to a better shot to the best shot. And I think that time DeAndre had a good one that he passed up. Walker again short. Little one. 
Johnson. Hot for the count. He's tapped out to Walker. I think what's going to be really important for Kentucky is to keep Walker from getting consecutive hoops. Oh. If he gets one occasionally, as he gets one there and draws the foul. But when Kimball Walker, guys, gets two or three hoops in a row, the emotion level picks up about a hundred times and the oh. team feeds off it. Well said, he's the melody man. Can make oh. music from all angles. Oh, Kimball Walker. He can dance too. Yes, he can. He's a young kid. He actually performed at the Apollo, Harlem's famous Apollo Theater. He's a dancer. Yeah, it shows in some of his moves. I mean, his his change of pace, and you see his mom, Andrea, change of pace and direction yeah. is unreal. He's so low to the floor. He gets guys on their heels and then creates any kind of space he wants. Well, um, Steve, he's the combination of quick and fast. He can dart. And he can blow by you, and that's a lethal combination. You saw his mother, Andrew. He might be the best ankle breaker there is yeah. in college basketball. And right now, despite those turnovers, and Kentucky winning the offensive board battle, UConn plus five because they've been more efficient offensively. Roscoe Smith with the rebound, handles it here at the other end. Now Napier, confident freshman is Napier. He's out of the Boston area. Oh, and Holmes McDaniel, miscommunication. For instant analysis and highlights of the Final Four, log on to SI.com. I think it's going to be important here for Brandon Knight to get a hoop. Yeah. You know, he has not gotten into the flow of this game. Not at all. Got some early looks, rushed them, as you said, Clark. Mm -hmm. You know, you wonder if that three for 15 night and now he doesn't start playing into his head a little bit, particularly with Napier draped all over. Kentucky shooting 25%. Not made a basket in over four minutes. Ligon, no, with that one. Threaded inside and scoring. Holmes McDaniel. Kimba with a big stretch. 10 nothing run Huskies. But also Kentucky missing shots, forcing quick ones. UConn able to get a little bit in transition. And as a result, an 8-0 run. Now Kentucky has to be ready to get good shots here. Go through their offense, make a few passes. Missed nine of the last ten. Knight gets that one to go. Big shot. Kentucky needs him. They feed off of his scoring yep. and his energy. They were five for 21 before that shot. Remember, this is a team that has seen some great defenses. Ohio State, excellent at the defensive end. And they've shot 48% in this tournament. So they're just off to a cold start. Let's see if we can get it going. Napier, no from the outside, but Smith keeps it for the Huskies. Napier snaps it over to Jeremy Lamb. Flying through and gets the soft roll. Crawls over the front of the rim. That young fellow will come up on you in a heartbeat from a long distance away. Explosive first step and tremendous length. He, he covers ground quickly. Reminds me a little bit of Steve Smith in our studio as Knight gets his second in a row to go but that length of Jeremy Lamb and the shooting ability remember Steve back in yeah. Michigan oh, State yeah. and of oh, course yeah. a great NBA career but very similar player by quickness about, by night and you talk about night getting going Steve he told me yesterday his greatest attribute other than his shooting oh. is confidence Kentucky on the break three on two Jones fakes the pass and lays it in Looked like he was going outside to Deron Lamb. Steady lays it in beautifully oh! done. At the other end, Oriaki, the basket counts, and Harrelson's whistle for that one. And he's well defended on that Ohio State. We are well defended, but the ability, the ability to make big shots at the end of games when you're not having a good night. I mean, you talked about it, but the confidence That's what it is. is unbelievable. He thinks every next shot is going in as Harrelson will have to sit now with his second foul. So without Harrelson, this team becomes a lot smaller. Not a lot, but a little smaller. Terrence Jones is the only real interior player. Guys, we have uh, Oriaki, remember, fell to the floor, and because he is bleeding, you get the sub for the shooter. 
So Combs McDaniel be at the line. And because it's it's blood, right. it's Jim Calhoun's choice. Exactly. And he takes Cruz McDaniel and a very poor choice, Jim Calhoun. <laughs> Could have been a very bizarre three-point play by two different players. Right. Yeah, that's he right. Missed from the line. There's Knight. Spotted up and ready to go. No. That one looked good though. He it was a good looking shot. He was on balance, mm -hmm. under control, got squared up and just didn't get it down. But he's not going to stop shooting because he is confident and his teammates are confident in him. And a holding foul on Liggins of Kentucky, his first. Team foul five. Aquandu checks back in for the Huskies. Meanwhile, UConn has really kind of taken control of the board since their early struggles, and with Harrelson on the bench for Kentucky, you know, that could be an issue for the Wildcats. This is not a great box out team. Harrelson is the one guy who puts a body on people, and he lets other people go get the rebound. And UConn could take advantage of his absence. Walker with a three. Back to the rim. Tapped out by Lamb. He knew love, Napier was there. I love Lamb's instincts, guys. I mean, he never seems to be out of control, moves well without the ball, anticipates an excellent change of pace, too. He never really is going so fast that he's not under control. And Napier saw the double team. New center is open. Crashing home. A Bundu takes the pass from Napier. Beautifully done. Terrence Jones went after that block shot, and he was the one guarding with Kwandu, so that's what allowed the Yukon Husky big man to get that drop-off pass. Jones, yeah, like Kwandu defending. Yeah, turn and face and try to go to work, but now you get the advantage to the defender when you turn your back on the guy that's taller than you defending you. Shabazz. It's a bad. Well, he's a difference maker, isn't he, Shabazz? It allows Kimba Walker to play off the ball. He's got great moxie about him. I think this is when they're at their best. Yeah, I agree with you. you know, when they play small with either Okwandu or Oriaki playing the five. They hear from the wing, three, no. It's Knight, stripped away, stolen by Kimba Walker. Feeble and Smith, and the Huskies take the eight-point lead. Brandon Knight is quick, but Kimball Walker is quicker. Yes. And he anticipated that move the whole way. He sure did. He was all over. Right to the ball. Little able to get free. Wildly puts it up over the back of his head. And it's going to go to the Huskies. All the castaways are going to Redemption Island. And what happens there will surprise and shock them. Don't miss an all-new Survivor Wednesday only, CBS. Ross McDaniel comes in for Napier. Well, I'll tell you what, this, can, this UConn defense has been pretty good, guys. And Excellent. they're only giving up 39% field goal shooting in the tournament. And they've really disrupted the rhythm of Kentucky here. And the Wildcats go to a zone. John Calipari mentioned this yesterday. He said he had it ready, but he didn't want to use it against North Carolina. But he, he knew he'd have to use it in case of foul trouble. And that's what's happened here with Harrelson on the bench. You can really see how this zone maneuvers around from that angle. And I think he's also trying to disrupt the rhythm of UConn because they've gotten really good shots the last few times down the floor, Steve. Oh. Do too strong, taking the jumper. On the line was Knight, so it belonged to the Huskies. It was a timeout on the floor. Seven different UConn players have scored. 3.33 to go, first half. Huskies lead it by eight. Wildcats have Harrelson on the bench with two fouls. And UConn to inbound. Walker sets up Lamb. Look at that two-man game. Out of the timeout, they lifted everybody else, Jim. A called play. Dribble right into Lamb's area, and then that set up the back cut. Kentucky is playing like a young team right now. Yeah. They're hurried. They're unsettled. They're a little flustered. Get a break there as the foul is going to be called. 
But they've got to settle down a little bit and try to put together a decent surge over this last three minutes. Now on Napier coming up AT&T at the half. Greg Gumbel, Greg Anthony, Seth Davis, Kenny Smith, Charles Barkley. They're going to break down the first half and they're going to talk live with Brad Stevens, the Butler coach, as well as Matt Howard. Bulldogs all set for a Monday night appearance again. We also have a Naismith watch presented by AT&T. All coming up AT&T at the half. Is Big Blue going to make it to the studio set? I tell you what, I can't get enough shots of Big Blue. <laughs> blue 2 you're talking about. Yes, sir. Oh, look at that floater for Knight. And that ends an eight-point run by Connecticut. Oh, they got to tighten up their defense. They've given up 11 field goals in the paint. 11 of UConn's 13 field goals in the lane, and Kentucky goes back to the zone. He is shooting 70% from the floor in the tournament. And they've improved their zone offense considerably because the team that gave UConn the most trouble in the Big East was Louisville. They ran exclusively zone. They beat them twice doing it. You better believe Kentucky watched that tape. But the adjustment UConn has made since then is they've gotten Lamb at that foul line area. That's right. The soft spot of the zone is actually shooting 70% from the three-point line, 59% overall. Ball tapped around, and it belongs to UConn. It was a goal tip. Brown wanted it on that Kentucky side. I thought it had gotten off the rim by the time the UConn player touched it, but a tough angle to tell for sure. Daniel short from the free throw line. 140 to play in the half. This is the biggest deficit of the entire tournament for the Wildcats. Down 10. Well, I think they're trying to get to the locker room to readjust at halftime without this thing getting completely out of hand. Tough shot by Lee. Oh. Long rebound, Vargas. Doubled up and behind, almost stripped. That never touched the rim. They got six to shoot. Knight knows it. Another floater. Long. Oh. Tap around to Vargas. to go in the half. Jones who had the hot start. He is fouled by Combs McDaniel. That's the 15th foul on Connecticut. Get coverage of the Division I Women's Basketball Tournament. NCAA.com slash Final Four. Of course, University of Connecticut, both the men's and women's programs at the Final Four. Yep. Well, guys, how much has Kentucky missed Josh Harrison? Yep. Hey, you know, it's been a big factor, Steve. They really run a lot of their offense through him on dribble handoffs, and they've been relegated to that. Just one on one moves with Brandon Knight. They've had no flow yeah. offensively. None at all. There's Harrison right there. He's got the two fouls. And this halftime break can't come quick enough yeah. for K Kentucky. And UConn could pretty much run it down. Gafai is back on the floor for Coach Calhoun. Two-second differential. I would look for some kind of a dribble handoff action with Kimball Walker near the end of the shot clock. Get him the ball. That's what they usually do in these situations. Lamb takes it with six on the shot clock. Tapped around. It comes out tonight. Kentucky can put something up here before the half with Liggins. No. Tapped around, and we reach halftime. Well, it's all about efficiency for Kentucky. Josh Harrelson sat out most of that first half with two personal fouls, only played 11 minutes. You know, UConn was energy efficient in that half. Kentucky needs to add some insulation yeah. and recalk around the window <laughs> because they were really allowing themselves to leak a lot of heat. So how do you get that solved? You got to be patient on offense. Yeah. You got to run your cuts, move the ball, be solid defensively, and that's a good start. Now Liggins blocking the shot of Kimber Walker. Meanwhile, Walker. Able to deflect that one out of bounds to prevent the break. And Clark, you mentioned during the time or during halftime the West Virginia game. Yeah. And, and that was what, an eight point deficit? Eight point deficit. Kentucky came out in the first three or four minutes of that second half and really eliminated that hole. 
and then finish strong to win down the stretch. They're capable now. They're a good three-point shooting team, but it's about idling down and the shot selection and quality improving. And you do that by being patient. You can't rush into your offense if you're Kentucky. Kentucky missed its last six shots of the first half. Miller, that one, a takeaway. Undecided driving into the paint. Walker was wanting to put it up, didn't get the clean handle. But Napier has one and missing on the three. Boy, Kentucky lucky there because nobody near him. Nobody was there. I think Kentucky's got to get Harrelson involved. Not necessarily to score, but he's an excellent passer from the high post. He can pick like he did right there, freeing up Brandon Knight. There you go. Knight with the three. Guys, when you can shoot the three, no lead is insurmountable, especially if it's a 10-point lead with 19 minutes to go. I mean, when you can make three-point shots, leads can evaporate rapidly. First basket for the Cats in four minutes. Going back to the first half. Walker zigzags, comes up short. Jones gets away from Napier. It's Liggins. Over to Miller. Another three. Yes, sir! Kentucky, as you mentioned it, Clark. Couple of quick threes, and just like that, a four-point game here at the Final Four. We're coming out of a UConn timeout. Knight hit a three, and then right back, Miller hit one. And Calhoun said, that's enough. <laughs> Taking a timeout. Well, they were good looks. You know, they, they, as you talked about, Clark, they didn't take good shots in the first half. This is a team that really improved its shot selection as the season went on. So this is more like the Kentucky club that we've seen of late. Staying in the zone. If they're going to do that, though, they've got to keep the ball out of the middle, either by way of the pass or the dribble. That time, a gaping hole for Lamb to split defenders. And it's a call on Liggins, his second. And Jeremy Lamb to inbound. Tucky now man to man. They can switch all over the floor, too. They're interchangeable parts defensively for Kentucky. Yep. Napier steps in for a two. Smith trying to follow it up. Kentucky has it again. Liggins. To Miller outside Jones. Here comes pick and roll with Josh Harrelson. Oriaki back out there, and he was able to switch off. But another call here on UConn. Called on Napier, his second. Well, that was a tough one there. I thought he was in yeah. pretty good position with his feet. May have just made enough contact with the hand, but that's one you probably would like to see a play on there. Donnell Beverly seeing his first action coming in for Napier. He's a senior. In Hawthorne, California. Miller. High off the glass, Harrison put back, yes, and a foul. Nobody in college basketball carves out the weak side board better, poor position, better than Harrison. How about Jared Sollinger? He's got to be close. I said nobody better. I said nobody better. I said nobody better, partner. But that whole, play, that whole play really says everything about what Jer Josh Harrelson is as a player. It started out with his ability to run that dribble handoff on the perimeter. He carves out so much space for these Kentucky perimeter players with the pass off the dribble. That's right. And then the penetration, and then he gets that offensive putback. So Oriaki called for the foul, and look at them keep the possession going off the long rebound. Here's another three. Look out. No. Oriaki pulls it down. UConn's missed its last six. That goes back to the first half. They've been shut out here the first 320 of this half. And you would think Kimber Walker will try to look for his offense. He's very content at times to try to set other people up. But if he senses his team needs a hoop, he'll usually be a little more shot hungry. That's Roscoe Smith. 
The freshman by way of Baltimore. It's a big shot for him. He's a, a guy who thrives on making shots. The UConn staff telling us that making shots affects his entire game. If he can see the ball go through the hoop, his defense picks up, plays harder, plays with more energy. Not uncommon for a first year yeah, player. That's right. His hoop, the first in over six minutes, going back to the first half. And turnover committed by Kentucky. Tuesday, new case, new killer, new boss. Mark Harmon in a new episode of TV's number one drama, NCIS Tuesday, only CBS. Lamb for Kentucky. Back on the floor for Miller. And DeAndre Liggins will remain on Kemba Walker. He's done a nice job on him. That length gives him the ability to back off a step off Walker due to his speed. Now, and a takeaway by Terrence Jones. And then a foul right back on Smith of Connecticut. So Kentucky has tightened things here in the second half. Well, Kentucky holding things a little better. Holding things a little better together here in this first five minutes of the second half. Shot selection has improved. Ball movement as well. And their defense, and they're dominating the boards again. Just like they started out the game, they hit the offensive glass, and they've controlled the rebounding category here in the second half. Lamb loads up for three. He's got it. Three threes in the second half by three different Wildcats. This is a team that shoots 43% from the three-point line in the tournament, making about seven, right about eight a game. And Lamb is a freshman, just an incredibly efficient shooter. 50% field goals, 48% from three. Another, another turnover for UConn. And get five probably coming out. Although he tried to throw that pass to the target hand of Oriaki, but he had too much speed on it. And it was a tad wide of the target hand. And there you see Jim Calhoun instructing the young fella. Well, giving him some pretty good yeah. minutes, I thought, in the first half. You know, he started 10 games during the regular yeah. season. Yeah, played well for them. Yeah. And now UConn goes to an extremely small lineup with Oriaki and basically four guards on the floor. Well, again, that's the quandary. This is the best offensive unit they can put out there. Lamb for the lead. And Kentucky 10 down at halftime. Now up by two. What a turn of events in five minutes. Now they're working harder to get better shots. It's as simple as that. The first half, they were way too quick on the trigger. They're all trying to do it themselves. That is Walker, and he had a foot on the line. Two-point shot. Ties it at 35. This little guy's getting ready to put it in his hands. Yeah. yeah. That's his first basket. Yeah, he's nine and a half to go in the first half. And you can see his frustration during the timeout with his teammates. But he is the leader for this Husky club. Right with the assist to Harrelson. Wide open. Well, when you knock down threes, it's amazing how much more room you have yeah. on the floor. And remember, this is not the shot blocking type defense that UConn has been known for as Walker gets fouled on a three and almost yeah. gets it to go. Foul on Liggins. Masters Live streams exclusive video of Amen Corner 15 and 16 and featured group. For more, go to cbssports.com slash masters, masters.com, and it's all coming up this week. That tradition unlike any other. Walker to the line. Shoot three. And guys, think about this. The last decade or so, you, UConn had to beat Colton Armstrong, and they had... Uh, who was the other big, the, the shot blocking big between Tabit and Armstrong? Uh, Omeka Okafor. Okafor, there you go, who led uh, UConn to the national championship in 2004. You can throw Josh Boone in there, too. You can throw Boone in there as well. So this is a different UConn type of defense. They're very long and active, and they challenge three point shots, but they don't protect the rim. And so, Bob, you said it. Once you start making threes, if you're Kentucky, now it opens up that lane. We'll see if Kentucky can continue to get to the rim. Well, it's going to be about multiple contributors for Kentucky. And Kimball Walker trying to get himself going and then getting some help from his teammates. That was the third foul on Liggins, and Walker hits all three. And Knight 
He's picked up his energy and he is fouled on the shot, they say, by Napier. That's a good call by you, Jim. You're right. The assertiveness of Brandon Knight and the purposefulness. He was really anxious, I thought, in the first half. Now he's got more of a purpose to his movement and attacking smartly in the half court. Speaking of smartly, Knight, at the end of this semester, the freshman will academically be a junior at Kentucky. 4.0 GPA at the celebrated Pinecrest School, private school there in Florida. Fort Lauderdale, where the likes of Wayne Heisinger, Kelsey Grammer were just a few of the alumni out of that school, and he is a special kid with talent, classroom, and on the hard work. No question about it, Jim. Yeah, took so many honors courses in high school that it translated into college credit. Kentucky staying in the zone. Open That's the spot. That's the spot. That's the shot you got to knock down. But I'd still rather see Lamb in that position rather than Roscoe Smith. Right again. Ah! And Aquandu clears it for Connecticut. Holmes McDaniel wanted it. Misfired. Oh, Kentucky lucky there. A miscommunication. Half the team was in zone, half in man. And that's a, a wide open look. And Combs McDaniel has really struggled with this shot, guys, in the tournament. Only three of 13, one of seven on threes. That's going to Connecticut. And Walker is, uh, for a moment, holding on to his right leg. And I know Knight wants to be aggressive, but they can't get away from what got them this lead, which is sharing the ball, running some things through Harrelson, and getting some driving lanes after three or four passes, not just going one on one. And good call from the officials there. That ball. Yeah, I think Darius Miller is going to roll on Kimball Walker just momentarily right there. You yeah. see his backside gets the ankle of Kimball Walker. You call that a chop block. Yeah, that's dangerous. Walker is still grimacing and standing still here in the front court. Napier bounces it inside oh. and Smith. Knocked away by Jones, up ahead. Lamb, what a defensive oh. effort by Walker. Bad leg and all. He was determined not to let Lamb get a dunk. Tremendous hustle and anticipation by Kimball Walker. Watch him. Keeps his eye on the ball, stays away from contact with his body and makes a terrific defensive play there. It's nine again. Air ball this time. Well, he really doesn't have a backup. You know, if, if, if he had one, now would be a time to take him out. He looks a little well, tired. Well, Perry just looked over there at the bench because he'd like to sit him down, yeah. I think, Steve. You're exactly right. You can play Lamb, Deron Lamb, at some point. That's right. not really his spot. But just for a short term, I think you're right on top of it there, Steve, because it gives Brandon Knight a chance to settle down oh. from watching. Oh, and Jeremy Lamb. Able to draw the foul, sneak it in on the baseline. That is Harrelson's third, guys. It's Country Music's Party of the Year, Reba. And Blake Shelton will host the Academy of Country Music Awards live tomorrow only, CBS. Now, we talked early in the Jeremy telecast Harris about the fact that Kentucky goes six, maybe seven deep. We have seen some of Vargas tonight. He's the seventh man. But because of this lack of depth, you may see more and more of this zone. Harrelson picking up his third. Brandon Knight tired. He's going to go to the bench for maybe a minute or two. got a timeout coming under 12. That's right. First dead ball under 12, so. Lamb, two pure ones. Puts Connecticut back up by one. And trading off the lead now here in the last few minutes. We had that stretch in the second half of the Butler BCU game with eight lead changes, and that's off the hands of Jones, and there is that timeout on the floor. 40-39, UConn. Second half from the floor. Meanwhile, Knight, he got that little breather you guys talked about, yeah. the lack of depth, but they cheated a little bit on the front side right, and north right. side of the 12-minute timeout. And he got a little extra time to gather himself. 
Well, John Calipari has shown he has great confidence in Brandon Knight. And we've seen in this tournament, even when he struggled, he can still make big shots because he's willing to take them. Meanwhile, Harrelson goes to the bench. So Kentucky's going to have to run its offense without him. Oh, beautiful move. In the air, some nifty action by Roscoe Smith. Huskies back up by three. I think that was Kimball Walker who set him up beautifully. Another assist. Lamb with another three. He's done it again. That's cash. It's ATM time if he's got his feet set and he's open. 50% from the three-point line. Yeah, especially after he's made a couple. He's feeling it now. And another good possession from Kentucky. The penetration, the second, the third pass leading to the open shot. Well, there was a mismatch. Somehow, Okwandu was defending Miller that time, and he dribble drove him and created help and then kicked it out. But look at the lineup yeah. Kentucky has. They basically have Jones at the five. Yeah, they've got five guys that can put yeah. him on the floor and beat you off the dribble. Yeah, that's, that's the second on Okwandu. And that's why Okwandu's got to sit yeah. down. Not because of the second foul, but because of the matchup issue. Ariaki comes in for him. We have a fifth tie of the second half. We've had four lead changes in this half. And now Oriaki will have to guard Darius Miller, and that's a tough matchup as well. Jones thought about putting it up. UConn just switching everything here. Knight. Bounces out to Jones. Lamb, one more time. Hey. Tapped over to Walker. Boy, and Lamb was ready to hit his fourth at the half. Walker, meanwhile, with two more caps on him. Oh, by Oriaki. So well, there's the flip side of this lineup situation right now. Oriaki has to guard a small at one end, but at the other, he's going to have his way on the glass. Miller slides off the rim. It's Oriaki. UConn really content just to walk it up. I think they would serve themselves well if they tried to run on occasion, Steve. I mean, this Kentucky team doesn't have much depth. Well, particularly with this smaller lineup. Yeah. Napier, Walker, and Lamb in. I agree with you. Here's Lamb with a three. No. He made 11 out of 15 for the tournament coming in over 70% from behind the arc. Oh. UConn's missed its last nine from outside, from the three. Mismatch if they throw it inside to Miller. Got Jones wide open. Oh. Back to the rim. Napier hits the floor, and Miller whistled for that. I think Kentucky missed an opportunity there. Miller was being defended by Napier as we take a look at the weak side rebound. Boy, Napier <laughs> drew that one. Boy, he drew that one. Yeah, a little flop there. Harrelson back on the floor, guys, with his three fouls. With 9-0-1 to play. It becomes a more conventional game now. But Harrelson and Oriaki will guard each other, and I would expect UConn to go away from this all-out switching defense that we've seen from them in the last three minutes. Walker takes it inside and was stumbling, and he got tripped. Called on Knight, his first team foul, number five. Well, Knight doesn't like it, but I thought it was a good call. Looked like he got tripped up on his way to the hoop. And Kentucky's actually lucky that Walker wasn't awarded two free throws. Lamb. Everything he does, he just glides. He is so smooth, but the curl was so well timed. Yeah. I mean, he lulled his defender to sleep and then picked up the pace on that little curl cut and got an easy one at the rim. Well done. That's tremendous maturity for a freshman to know how to play that effectively in tight space. Timeout, Kentucky. But Coach Calhoun's won 47.
NCAA tournament games at Connecticut. Hall of Famer. Educated right there in the home of uh, the Basketball Hall of Fame, Springfield, at American International College. The school had won four NCAA tournament games all time before he arrived. And he's managed 47 and two national titles there. Oh. Jones, oh, that one goes. And it go to the line. Just a big time move right here by Terrence oh. Jones. He's a little too big and strong for Roscoe Smith. Oh. Got his body into him. And then went to that left hand. Oh. His first points of the half. You guys both said early in this game he was a matchup problem for Connecticut. But how they solve that as Kentucky well, he, keeps it. Well, he hasn't been very aggressive. And they've moved the ball a lot better and gotten three-point shots for Miller, Lamb, and even Brandon Knight. But I think if this thing stays tight, Jim, as Knight goes all the way to the rim, I would expect Kentucky to look to isolate Terrence Jones a little more. Can't get much tighter than this. <laughs> yeah. And did you guys see John Calipari during the timeout lighting into Jones? I mean, he's trying to inspire this young guy. And when he made that shot, Calipari celebrated with him. Walker with a rainbow maker. We've seen him do that a few times this year. Yes, we have. That's his range in there, kind of 15, 17 foot in yeah. traffic. He finds a way to get that shot off. He's got 16, seven coming in this half. DeJuan Lamb answers right back with two of his own. He has been spectacular. What a half. Yeah. Well, 11 know, in this half. He had gone through a period after that ankle injury in the SEC title game. He had not found his offensive rhythm. He had really struggled, but he averaged 12 points a game during yeah. the regular season as a sixth man. So he's extremely capable offensively. He can shoot it deep. Showed you there he can score without the ball in terms of movement without it. And he's a hard guy to defend. Napier, look at these moves. Not able to finish it. Follow to Ariaki. Never gave up on it. And that's what penetration does. Napier might as well get an assist. He's just going to get a missed field goal attempt. <laughs> right. But get him an assist because he created that for Oriaki. switches back on Walker and they're having quite a battle. Megan's really chasing Walker off of screens the last couple of possessions. Rob inside oh. and it's stolen away by Terrence Jones. Rise to that move. It's a play he would not have made early this season. And the weak side defensive recognition from Jones and this entire team much improved over the course of this year. Jim Calhoun was looking for. I mean, that's a shot you want for Walker or Lamb. If you're Napier, you got to continue the possession, put it on the floor, penetrate, and find a teammate. They're only one of 11 for three. He got right at the other end. Sure. Maybe that's fatigue. Man, he's pulling the trigger on him. He's done that all night. Hasn't gotten his full follow through. Speed has not been set. I think he's just been rushing. And sometimes, Jim, when you start the game rushing, it's hard to slow down and get to the right pace. A little adjustment period, too, to playing in an arena like this. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, Walker talked to me about it this week when they played two years ago in Detroit in the Final Four. He shot very poorly there. Here he commits the turnover. Going away by Liggins. Bouncing it over to Knight. And again, denied by the Huskies. And Knight is gassed. Walker lays it in at the other end. Kentucky is fatigued. They are exhausted. They got beaten to the other end of the floor. Yep. 
And timeout Wildcats. Kimba Walker puts him up 52 48. And Kentucky has not scored in over three minutes. Now down by four. This is the last four from the field. Lamb drives in off the glass. No. Let's go Smith. Flies through the air and picks it up for the Huskies. A little miscommunication from Kentucky in transition, but they finally find their respective men. This is where Kimball Walker is really dangerous. He knows how to rest and then pick up the pace. And remember, Lamb hit the big shots against Arizona in a similar time, running off screens. Put three big jump shots in that game. Walker thought he was going to be fouled, but it was well defended by Kentucky. Yeah, cleanly blocked by Liggins, and Harrelson was right there as well. Kentucky needs a basket, though. They need to get something positive offensively here. Liggins looking for it. Short. Again, another stretch here without a whistle. Yeah. We're inside of three minutes. Still looking for the under eight timeout. <laughs> Jim's going to call it. Jim Calhoun's going to call it. So the Huskies head to the bench. Enjoyed seeing all the games. No question about it. That's certainly been the consensus as I've done my informal survey. <laughs> yeah. Fourteen to shoot. Big possession here for the Huskies. Napier driving in, goes to the other side. Oh, the perfect spin off the glass. Now this has been a guard-oriented offense throughout the tournament. Lamb, Walker, and Napier. Virtually all of the Connecticut offense has come through those three guys in the last four games. Kentucky scoreless for five minutes. The night is short again. Underneath is Jones, and he's fouled first. Yeah, the Bulldogs got contributions from a number of players, and we will see them Monday in the championship game against the team that can hold on and survive here because yeah. that's what it looks like it's going to come down to, Steve. And meanwhile, we've got Terrence Jones going to the line for a one and one. This is critical. And keep in mind, Jim, when we talked about it during the time, this is actually the under eight timeout. Yeah, right? even though there have been some timeouts called by the coaches, this is still considered the under eight timeout. Right, which means the next one will be the under three or under four timeout. And I, I think it's hurt Kentucky. It has no question you know, about it, their, Steve. Their lack of depth. They went, they got really tired during that long stretch. And the timeouts haven't ha helped them at all. And huge miss from Jones. That's big. That's big. Now you got to play probably 30 seconds of defense at least. And come up with a stop. Jones 0 for 5 from the line tonight. Kentucky has not scored since the 7-17 mark. Walker gets stuck and has it stolen by Jones. Liggins with a three. Oh, and he slices the lead in half. His first points of the night. Reminiscent of that big one he hit against North Carolina last week. No question. Boy, what a big turn of events. UConn had the ball, six-point lead. You can add to it instead. It's stolen. Liggins hits a three. Lamb a floater. Back to the rim. And it's Jones again. 16 rebounds now for Jones. He's had a handful of steals. The only thing he hasn't done is made his free throws. But he's done everything else. He's to tie it. Nine wheels short. He's fatigued. Oh, yeah. Got him left with the wheels. Yep. And it's out of bounds, stays with Kentucky. Now we've got another break in the action. Under a minute to play. Wildcat basketball. Kentucky will be inbounding. Coach Calhoun, two timeouts. Kentucky with two. Coach Calhoun with four final fours. And, and these are his grandchildren. <laughs> Well, Clark, if you're Kentucky, I think you've got to go two for one here. Oh, no question right? about it. No question about it. Knight has struggled all game long. 
But well, this is the time. Yeah. He right delivers. Time. Yeah. But he's got to make sure it's a good look. He's taken some poor shots here in the last few possessions. If you miss but and you get it off within the next 10 or 15 seconds, you don't have to foul at the other end. Right. So Kentucky has to be disciplined at both ends. Here's they don't Liggins. need a three. They don't need a three. He's fouled. Shooting a three. Wow. What a gutsy play from Liggins. Well, I think once he showed the ball and got his defender in the air, he had to go in yes. trying to draw the foul. And he can tie it at the line. And that's Jeremy Lamb leaves his feet. Oh, look, oh, they called it three. They're going to have to They're review this. Yep. They got it, Jim. They're, They're right. heading over to the monitor. They had called it on the floor, a three-point shot. But clearly, that's going to be overturned. Yep. Jeremy Lamb committing his first foul. But this works out perfectly for Kentucky. Obviously, they'd rather have the three free throws. It'll be two as you see the replay. Well, he got away with maybe a, well, that left foot moved a little bit too. That yeah, could be. Yeah, but, but I think it's going to be a two two shot foul. But you look at the game clock, 49.7 left. That means regardless of what happens with these free throws, Kentucky does not have to exactly. foul. And I'm sure John Calipari just yeah, told his team that right there during the break. Well, you got to knock these free throws down. That's what you need to do. Well, Liggins is 65 percent as a team. Kentucky is only three out of ten on the night. Remember, Jones is 0 for five. Yeah. So two shots and the first one perfect. Oriaki back in for Connecticut. Liggins has shown such great poise these last couple of weeks in the sure tournament. He really stars in the second half. Yeah. If you look at what he's done and no good with the second one. Two point lead. Connecticut. 45 to play. You don't need to foul. Good time to foul. No, why? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, I have no, no idea. Well, that's just the six-team foul. Okay, you, now you got 42 seconds, so there's about a 6.9 second differential on the shot clock. But that was a horrific foul right yeah. there, and, and it was something that had to be talked about during the timeout, or not the timeout, but the break while the officials were reviewing that three-point shot. Yeah, UConn gets the fresh 35. That's the fourth on Liggins, who's defending here on Walker. <laughs> I'm baffled by that. Well, and now they're going to looks like they're going to play it out. So they just cost themselves about five seconds. Yeah, maybe a little more. Maybe more. It was about what? It's going to be about 14 total if they got the ball back. Napier loses control. Knight has it on the floor and calls the timeout. Wow. Ball belongs to the Wildcats with 16 seconds. Wow, the freshman lost the handle, and Kentucky's freshman takes advantage. A nail biter here in Houston. Kentucky has possession, can tie it with a two. Don't need it, but could take the lead with a three. What do you see here, guys? Well, the most important thing is you need a high quality shot, Jim, and you've got to get it, I think, within five to seven seconds because you want to give yourself a chance for a second shot. And you also want to give yourself a chance to foul to extend the game if you don't score the basketball. Remember last weekend, Arizona in the same situation took a three, yeah. and Derek Williams probably could have put the ball on the floor. I agree with you, Jim. If you get a chance at a two, go for it. You don't need to, to launch a long three. The key is a quality shot. Yes. You've got to get a good look at the basket. Walker defending on Knight. Can he be the hero again? He's twice started in this tournament. Knight looking around. Gives it up. Liggins for the lead. Liggins off the mark. Dock around. Napier has it. And he's fouled with 1.7 seconds to play. Well, I don't like that. No. I don't like that at all. You've got to go earlier. And that's not a good shot. I mean, there's no reason. Too much dribbling. Pretty good defense. Great defense from Kemba Walker. It'll be a one and one. It's not a terrible shot, but in that situation it is because you need to go earlier right. and attack sooner and quicker so you get a chance to get something going to the basket so you don't have to settle yep. for a late shot clock three. Shabazz Napier, 76% on the season. It's a one and one. Kentucky does have a timeout left. Just one. But give UConn credit tonight. Their defense on Brandon Knight has been the difference in this game. I think we're gonna They're reviewing to see if perhaps they should add a little time here. Which would be huge for Kentucky. You know, you know with Liggins off the mark there, ball was tapped around. Where's the foul? 
Now right. that looks like they a two point one maybe. But again, you got to have. We learned this in that Washington That's North right. Carolina game That's this right. year. There's got to be a little lag time between when the whistle is blown and when the clock is stopped. We're gonna look at it again. Now remember, one and one coming up. And even if Napier misses, what kind of shot could Kentucky get off? Okay, so 1.7 seconds. The foul to still go. has not been indicated. There it is right there. I yeah, mean, I think that, they have it right right yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What about that, guys? From Kentucky's perspective here, they're actually going to add point 0.2. Actually, oh, no, they're going to put it the 2. Point, yeah, oh, so they right. add point 0.3. They right. add point 0.3 there. So they add point 0.3. Three. What do you think here? For Kentucky off of a miss. Well, you call the timeout uh, okay. after after the second shot. Because then you, then you, and he may try to miss the second one. I, I don't, unless he makes the first. Now you got to make the, the second. Well, the key is to make the shot and the game's over. Yep. If he makes it, the game's yeah, over. That's right. If he misses, you got to call timeout and set up your home run. Yeah, I agree. Amazing stretches has been for Connecticut. These must win games. Backs to the wall. That's going to do it. Game time. Timeout, Kentucky. To think this Connecticut team never lost outside of league play this year. They finished ninth in the Big East. They go nine and nine in league play, 21 and 0 outside of the Big East, with one of those wins being against a Big East team in the tournament here, Cincinnati. But just a remarkable month for this bunch of believers that Jim Calhoun says has given him a thrill beyond compare. The leadership of that man right there, Kemba Walker. This is a young team. You see the freshman Napier and Lamb. But they believe in their leader. Kemba Walker may be the player of the year in college basketball this season. And this club feeds off of his emotion and his ability. Laquandu is to make the inbounds pass a little more difficult. They don't even really need to defend. Down the court they go. Knight puts up the three. Makes it, but the game is over. It's a one-point win. The basket does count. Kentucky falls one point short. And UConn has done it again.